The end of the year is often where schools and organisations look at upgrading their boardroom and classroom solutions. And a lot of schools and businesses are now looking at going to interactive flat panels rather than projectors. Like Clockwork, BenQ's just released their new RP series of interactive flat panels. To start with, let's have a look at some of the very basic features that are quite appealing and not really available in the market in other segments. The first thing you'll notice is up the top corner here we have a CO2 monitor. So if you think of a scenario where you've got say 30 people in a boardroom or 30 students in a classroom or with their laptop or iPad out, CO2 is going to be emitted from those devices and your air quality will drop. So this is going to tell you what the air quality is like in the room. You'll see at the moment that's moderate and then as that changes, gets better or worse, it'll notify us. It's a tiny little thing but it's very cool and it's not available on many of these devices. The second thing, you'll notice there's a little badge down here that says germ resistance screen. So these screens are actually fitted with an electronic charge that will basically kill germs upon touching the screen. It sends through a, a shock every second or two and that will kill all the germs on the screen. Again, very cool because you're going to have lots and lots of people interacting with a screen like this and lots of fingers are going to mean lots of germs. So great little feature and again, something that you don't see very often on these devices. To move on to basic functionality, if you have a quick squeeze at the screen, you'll notice that it's straight on its home screen. That's a 4K display. So they're very, very high quality. Uh, as far as displaying content, that's going to be about as high as you're going to need. You'll see it's mounted on a trolley. Uh, this particular trolley is a trolley dolly. Uh, it's fitted with an electric raise and drop. So nobody's lifting a big heavy screen up and down when they want to play with it and adjust it for their own height. Let's have a quick squeeze at some of the features. So first of all, the most obvious function of an interactive flat panel is going to be as a whiteboard. So they all have these features. It's something that's fairly straightforward. We can import photos or videos. Obviously in this case, we're just going to wipe it to a clean slate and have a bit of a play. So first and foremost, obviously nice and responsive. We're going to be able to draw very quickly have it show up as you draw rather than a three second delay, which is really frustrating. Um, you're going to see there's a few functions here that are quite cool. So you have a calculator built into the screen, which you can draw on. So we can go two plus two equals, and that's going to add that up and show us four. And we can divide that by four, and you'll see that that'll calculate one for us. So it's pretty basic. It's been available as iPad apps for a long time, but it's handy to have it built into the screen. Closing that guy down, we can have a look at some of the other tools. Uh, one of the things that's very cool about this guy is you can set uh, like a draw. So if you've got a class of 30 students and you want to draw, say, a lucky number, uh, we can say we want to draw one and we want to draw between one and 30. And we can start that draw. It'll randomly select a number for us. So again, good little function, not going to blow anyone away, but it's handy to have built into the screen. Uh, just moving on, you've got timers, stopwatches, um, very basic features, but again, handy. So one of the other cool things that these guys have got, it's got a cool little drawing feature that's going to identify uh, characters, numbers, shapes as you draw them. So if you can imagine you're doing a workflow or maybe a organizational chart, we can draw a little box in up here, and then we can break that down to say two other employees and then from there break them down and then we can hit the identify button and that'll actually put them into shapes for you. You can see it's done an okay job considering how messy I am. And then inside there, we can draw in so we can write. And again, it'll identify the text. And again, my handwriting's pretty scrappy, so it's done a fairly good job. So moving on, one of the other cool features about this guy is it's going to allow you to collaborate. So you'll see that there's a little button down here. We can press that one and scan a QR code and that'll allow us to share documents and data to people in the room. But we can also hit the add button and when we add button, we'll get, we'll get a QR code also. And what we can do, without being connected to the same network or anything like that, we can just scan that with the camera app. 
and that's going to take us to a website and that website is going to ask our name we're going to check in and now we're connected to this screen so you'll notice when I write on here it's showing up and I'll give you a close look on the phone now that's currently in view mode if we change that over to collaboration mode I can now do the opposite in reverse and now I can write from the phone back to the board so you can imagine that would be a pretty handy feature in a classroom. Uh, granted, everyone was mature and behaved themselves. And that's going to allow you to have a dozen people or so writing back to that board at the same time, which again could get messy, but it definitely has practical applications. And as far as you uh, broadcasting to the screen, you do have your built-in AirPlay features as well. So if you did just want to AirPlay a device like an iPad in the classroom up to that panel, you can do without the use of an Apple TV or any external devices such as that. Another funky feature of this guy is it is 20 point multi-touch. So you can of course have 20 fingers going. I don't have 20 myself, but if I had someone else on the other side, we could demonstrate that. And you can see that that picks up all of them perfectly. But you can also jump into the settings here and select say, for example, the paintbrush feature. If we want to go really crazy, we can use a roller. And again, you can imagine the applications for that if you were using this, say, in a school in an art class. That's something you can get pretty creative with. Obviously, different users can have different colours and inputting different things. So, very, very cool. And again, as far as feature-wise, it's something that a lot of the higher-end screens have, but in this price range, 20-point multi-touch is something that is a little bit rare. Outside of the whiteboard app, it's a full Android operating system, so you can install Android apps on it. Uh, think of it like a computer, you have a web browser, you have a lot of basic tools. Obviously, you can go into your web browsers, clocks, emails. Um, there's a lot of things to play with there. And then outside of that, the other cool feature of this guy is you do have near-field communication. Now, you can use that to log on and off with the device. So again, in a boardroom, for example, if you wanted to log on as your user, you can set that to log on with your RFID cards. Um, in a classroom, you may have it so only the teacher can access the screen and nobody else. So you can use that to unlock the screen, change pens, etc. So just some very cool features on that guy. As far as price-wise, they're no more expensive than most of the products in the market currently, depending on the size. That's a 65 inch, so it is a fairly large screen. But if you're comparing the installation costs of, say, a projector, as well as the price of purchasing said projector, you're going to come in pretty similarly to get an interactive flat panel like this one. Thanks for taking the time to have a look at it today. If you've got any questions, please feel free to hit me up.